No Japanese info by Japanese people. Then, Kalo Mi! Welcome to the Japan list, I'm Naoto. If you talk about Japan or if you talk about Japanese history as a whole, it cannot be done well. Without mentioning three samurais, they are Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. When it comes to Japanese history, especially the part of the Middle Ages, it's not an exaggeration to say these three samurais built Japan. In case you don't know them, no worries, I let you know the basics today. Meanwhile, if you know them, that's wonderful. But I wonder. How far you know these three samurais? So, today on the Japan list, I'd like to give you an overview of these three samurais, but I'd like to say, with the several minutes on this video, it's very hard to explain in detail. So, today, I briefly summarize their relationships and how they lived through samurai history. Here we go! Before getting into each of the three samurais, let's start with some stories prior to their appearance. Just briefly though. Way back in 15th century, Japan rushed into the brutal war period. From long time ago, consistently, the top governor of Japan had been emperor. However, emperor family sometimes got trouble. For instance, it's something like the conflict over the succession of the statues. And almost every time, emperor relied on samurais. As the time passed by, samurai increased their power so much, and at some point, they became much stronger than emperor. Thus, the governance by emperor family lost its control, and the war period by samurai got started. Many samurais got started to govern each territory, and the head of the samurai clan was called daimyo. In other words, the war period by samurai in Japan, Sengoku Jirai, was a time where many daimyos were fighting against each other. The time Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Ieyasu was living was such a cruel and bloody war period. Now, thanks for waiting! Let's start with Oda Nobunaga. He was born in 1534 in Owari province, which is today's Aichi prefecture. Nobunaga was the second son of Oda Nobuhide, and eventually Nobunaga succeeded his father. Back then, Oda clan was known as more or less purple clan, and they tried to defeat other daimyos around Owari province. Today, when it comes to Nobunaga, thanks to the great achievement in his life, we tend to value him positively. Having said that, when he appeared as the head of Oda clan, his first reputation was completely different. People called him Utsukemono, which simply means idiot. Actually, he had a very bad reputation at the beginning. There are said to be some reasons, for instance like he was lazy in studies at temples, or his appearance was bizarre, whatever. However, after the battle of Okehazama, Nobunaga's reputation came to be completely turned over. Against people's expectations, Nobunaga defeated Imagawa clan that had 10 times more military power than Oda's army. People were like, hey, what's the deal? That's amazing! As such, the battle of Okehazama became the start point for Nobunaga to aim for unifying Japan. By the way, there is a trio of haiku which describes the personality of each of Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Ieyasu very well. As for Nobunaga, the haiku is as follows. Nakanu nara koroshite shimae hototogisu. Oops, sorry, it's Japanese. If I translate it, it'll be little cuckoo. If you won't sing, I will kill you. This haiku indicates that Nobunaga had short temper and he was famous for his impatient and ruthless character. Now, let's talk about Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who exceptionally rose from the peasant background. Nevertheless, he earned samurai title. That's plainly incredible! Hideyoshi was born in 1537, and he happened to serve Nobunaga in 1554. That was right after Nobunaga became the head of Oda clan. The haiku, which represents Hideyoshi's character, is as follows. Nakanu nara nakashite mi o If you won't sing Little Cuckoo, I will make you sing. Hideyoshi was a clever guy and filled with curiosity. The turning point of Hideyoshi's life must be the encounter with Nobunaga. Initially, Hideyoshi was serving Nobunaga as a low-class servant. Nevertheless, Hideyoshi became the favorite of Nobunaga. There's one well-known story about them. One snowy day, Nobunaga was about to depart, and Hideyoshi was beside him as a chore man. Nobunaga said, 
Hey, monkey. We are going out. Well, actually, it is said Nobunaga called him monkey. So anyway, hey, monkey, we are going out. And Hideyoshi replied, certainly. Please put the shoes on. Here they are. But Nobunaga noticed something strange. Hey, ma'am, it's cold today, but these shoes are already warm. It's very strange, isn't it? I think you were sitting on my shoes with your dirty ass. How rude are you? No, 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 no. I never do that, sir. Then how could it happen? Well, I actually warmed your shoes in my pocket beforehand so your foot won't get cold. Hmm. Well, you are a clever monkey. It typifies Hideyoshi's cleverness very well. Thus, Hideyoshi was getting in good with Nobunaga. On the other hand, let's talk about another important samurai, Tokugawa Ieyasu. Ieyasu was born in 1543 at Okazaki Castle in Aichi Prefecture. He spent turbulent times in his early life, and that was due to the circumstance under which he was born. His father was Matsudaira Hirotada, and the Matsudaira clan had been governing Mikawa province. Mikawa province was actually sandwiched between two strong samurai clans, Imagawa clan on the east and Oda clan on the west. In short, Mikawa province was in danger to be conquered by either of them and Ieyasu was born under such tough circumstance. One day when Ieyasu was still age of six, his father requested Imagawa to send reinforcements to oppose Oda clan. Imagawa in response demanded Matsudaira to send his own son as hostage. Matsudaira reluctantly admitted the offer. Thus, Ieyasu came to spend his early life as a hostage. Eventually, 14 years later, Ieyasu was unleashed and came back to Okazaki, the place where he was born. Subsequently, he unified the east and west of Mikawa province and he started to govern there. Two years after the Battle of Okehazama, where Nobunaga gained incredible victory, Ieyasu decided to form an alliance with Nobunaga. Now three samurais got together. They were, so to say, a group based around Nobunaga. Now, let's get back on Nobunaga as for his ambition. After the Battle of Okehazama, Nobunaga, allied with Ieyasu, tried to confront other daimyos around their territory. They defeated many other daimyos with great force, and finally Nobunaga gained the center of Japan, which is today's Kyoto. But it was still half on the way to unify Japan as a whole. Subsequently, Nobunaga tried to invade the western side of Japan, Chugoku and Shikoku area. However, all of a the sudden, there was an unexpected betrayal by one of Nobunaga's top general, whose name is Akechi Mitsuhide. Nobunaga was assassinated by Akechi Mitsuhide at Honnoji Temple in Kyoto. Meanwhile, Hideyoshi was fighting against Mori clan in Chugoku area, which was a demand by Nobunaga. Hearing the death of Nobunaga, Hideyoshi immediately suspended the battle and nimbly returned to Kyoto in order to avenge Mitsuhide. Thus, the vengeance was accomplished thanks to Hideyoshi's immediate action. His contribution for the vengeance was rewarded, and Hideyoshi virtually took over Oda clan and Nobunaga's power as well, and Ieyasu became the one of Hideyoshi's top general. Thus, after some twists and turns, eight years after Nobunaga's death, Hideyoshi finally accomplished the unification of Japan. That's great achievement. However, 10 years later, Hideyoshi died of illness, which triggered another conflict. Now, the problem is the succession of Hideyoshi's power. Actually, Hideyoshi left a will to maintain Toyotomi's power. However, Ieyasu didn't follow Hideyoshi's will. Ieyasu broke some rules determined by Hideyoshi, and he increased his power. On the other hand, some samurais, especially who have been serving Toyotomi clan from a long ago, opposed to Ieyasu. In 1600, the biggest battle ever in samurai history, the Battle of Sekigahara, broke out. As a result, the winner of Sekigahara was Ieyasu. In this way, when he was age of 58, Ieyasu took over Toyotomi's power and succeeded the unified Japan. 
Iyasu became the top samurai governor of Japan and he established a government by samurai, which is called Tokugawa Shogunate. In this way, the brutal war period by samurai ended up with a victory by Tokugawa and the relatively peaceful time, Edo period, got started. It's been a long story, but now let's take a look at haiku again. As for Iyasu, Nakano nara, naku made matou, hototogisu. Little cuckoo, if you won't sing, I will wait for you. This haiku represents Iyasu's personality, typified with patience and perseverance. Also, it represents how Iyasu lived through samurai war period and how he became the top samurai. Thanks for watching. See you next time on the Japanalist. Arigatou gozaimashita.